Welcome back to Your Average Witch, where every Tuesday we talk about witch life, witch stories, and sometimes a little witchcraft. Today's episode of Your Average Witch is brought to you by Jupiter Rituals, a new shop created by Rachel, co-host of Two Geminis and a Leo, and the founder of Anahata's Purpose. It's that time again, my annual Anahata's Purpose episodes. In the first episode of this series, I talked to attendees of Anahata's Purpose to find out why they go there, what they like, and why you, dear listener, should come next year. In this episode, you'll meet Alana, Elisa, Katie, Kaylee, Jess, Kristalina, Luke, Lindsay, Lyle, Sabrina, and Stephanie. I'd also like to invite you to participate in a 30-day photo challenge over on Instagram. Look for the 30-day challenge graphic or search the hashtag HiveHouseBeSpooky. I'm giving away your average witch merch, a bee box, and a gift certificate to Clever Kim's Curios at the end of the challenge. Before I go into the guest stories, let me talk to you about Jupiter Rituals. Jupiter Rituals specializes in crafting spell candles from mid-century modern, retro, and Art Nouveau items that blend vintage charm with the power of intention. Each vintage container is handpicked from the past, giving them new life. Each piece adds a touch of nostalgia and class to your space. Vintage charm creates a unique ambiance that's both timeless and enchanting. Jupiter Rituals is also great for the planet. There are enough beautiful items out there for us to never buy new again. Do you like options? I know I do, because hi, I'm a Taurus. With Jupiter Rituals, you have choices aplenty. The signature offering is customized magic. Customize your spell candle. You may find items that don't have a candle in them just yet. Are you called to it? Choose it and make it your own. You are the architect of your own intention, and Rachel is here to bring it to life. When selecting the item, put the details in the personalization section. Let her know the specifics of what you want it for, and she'll craft a spell candle tailored to your needs. It's a unique and personalized experience that sets your intentions in motion. She also offers small batch enchantments, in addition to customized spell candles, Jupiter Rituals offers small batch and one-off spells. These creations are crafted when the universe calls, infused with the intention received, and eagerly awaiting their destined keeper. Each one is a unique masterpiece, ready to find its way to a new home. Jupiter Rituals brings you the power of retro and vintage. Their collection features mid-century modern, retro, and Art Nouveau items that have stood the test of time. These vintage treasures are not only aesthetically pleasing, but also hold their own unique energies and stories. When paired with intention, they become vessels for powerful magic. Want Jupiter rituals? Because Jupiter is the best! Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system, represents expansion, abundance, and growth. That doesn't solely mean financial abundance, although it can mean that. It means expansion and abundance of what you're looking for to either bring in or push out of your existence. In the same way, Jupiter Rituals spell candles help you expand your intentions, bringing abundance and positive change into your life through the power of ritual. Troop, troop. To shop with Jupiter Rituals, visit anahataspurpose.com and click on swag. Now let's get to the stories. Lindsay, hello. Hello. It's our last day of Anahata. If I say that, never mind. I'm not going to cry. Um, <laughs> can you please introduce yourself and let everybody know who you are and what you do and where you and where they can find you? I am Lindsay. I am one half of the Rusted Rabbit. I make all kinds of crazy crystal jewelry with wire and other bits and baubles. Does that sound familiar? Yes, because they've been a sponsor previously. <laughs> Where can they find you on the internet? Um, we are on Facebook as The Rusted Rabbit. We are on Instagram as The Real Rusted Rabbit because we got hacked. <laughs> oh, I wondered about that. <laughs> and our website is www.therustedrabbitgr.com. How many times have you been to Anahata's? This is my second year. What made you come this time? Um, just the magic of last year. <laughs> last year, I was really guarded and avoided a lot of connection. And I forced myself to do a lot more of that this year. <laughs> Yay! I think the first year is for us to see that it's we're not going to be attacked. Yes. 
<laughs> it took me three years to get my top off. We're almost the first base. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Anahatas. <laughs> What's been your favorite thing this year? Um, All of the singing, which is really strange for me. Like, I have a lot of throat chakra work to do, and I keep on running into Leslie Ann, who is just a magical woodland fairy. And she just keeps leading us in these call and response songs. And what? Yeah, I love those. It's been wonderful. That's actually what we're doing next at the the porch. And it's That's been really that. lovely, actually. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Would you say that Anahatas has affected your practice or your life outside of actually being here? I'd say yes. I I feel like I go through periods of just like complete stagnancy, if that's a word. <laughs> and I uh, coming here kind of like reawakens that that side of me and just like brings out the magic again. And yeah, it's just a magical place. I I don't even know how to describe it. <laughs> Here's an example. I just looked over there and saw mist in the trees, and now I'm about to cry because oh. there's mist in the fucking tree. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm laughing, but I'm still about to fucking I know, cry. You think we were all on shrooms or something? <laughs> <laughs> all I've had today is my caffeinated Kool Aid, and not all of it. Is there anything you would like to see next year that you have not seen here? Oh, that's difficult. Poof. It's hard to think outside here when we're actually here. Yeah, I can't think of anything. Everything's here. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe just like, ah. You stumped me. Because <laughs> we're still in it. Yeah. I, I've i just, when you get here, you have the experience you have, and it's hard to think of what you would actually want that isn't here already. Yeah. Why should people come here? To shake yourself out of your comfort zone. And really express yourself be the little kid that you once were that you're scared to be now because we a lot of times aren't given that space in our real lives our default lives you're the kid you weren't allowed to be yeah <laughs> fuck i'll <laughs> cry again god damn it well thank you for talking to me thank you that's the last question thanks bye Thanks for talking to me. Would you please introduce yourself and let everybody know who you are and what you do and where they can find you? Absolutely. So my name is Alyssa. I am here um, setting up the cereal bar at Anahana's Purpose 2023. Um, so excited to be here. Um, you can find us at stephscerealbar.org. Um, and we are basically just a nonprofit who want to feed people at no cost because food should be free and everyone should access food. Yes. Hello. Love it. How many times have you been here? This is uh, my second year. What made you come this time? The The response that I got the first time, because the first last year we did the cereal bar here too, and the, the outpouring, pun intended, of love <laughs> and just appreciation for the cereal bar. It was just like, we got to make sure we come back here every year. And thankfully, um, Rachel, who runs the festival, has, is just such a big supporter of the cereal bar. And we can't thank them enough for um, letting me bring this little this little gem of an idea <laughs> here for everyone. I was really everyone. pleased that you were coming back, too. Good. Thank you. Not that I have anything to do with anything in the running of eight Anahatas, but I was really <laughs> happy. What's been your favorite thing so far? I think just getting to meet everybody. It's such a comfortable energy here. Um, everyone is just so accepting. And you, it's like you don't even have to 
think twice about what a mess your hair probably looks like today or you know hello <laughs> um everyone it's just such a community like the festival community in in general has changed my life when i started going to festivals um just this this community it's i found my tribe you know how do you think that anahadas i know you said festivals plural but Mm -hmm. do you think this festival has changed your life at all i don't think not yet but i i definitely can see myself coming back every year it's such a beautiful atmosphere to be around and the people again i just love all the people yay what is something you might like to see here next year that you didn't find this year? Hmm. I don't think I, there's anything specific. I think it would be cool if there were more um, uh, like campfire jams. But I know rain has yeah. a lot to do with that. Um, or maybe even like an open mic type thing, like in some of the downtime for people to to take that part in neat. yeah i don't know Ooh, i'm just like a big fan of like stuff yeah maybe you could fun. do that you could do anything you get up there and do stand up you could you know like a like a oh my god i can't remember the word a something act variety a variety act show. yeah <laughs> that'd be fun why should people come here people should come here because this is such a great atmosphere to really dig deeper and learn about yourself and learn about new things and there are so many great facilitators also that can help you do that and so many have such a specific niche Mm -hmm. and I think that's great um and you know they come from all over the place so it's it's really such a great way to to get experience from a lot of different people in a lot of different areas but all in one place Awesome. Well, thank you for talking to me. Yeah, you're welcome. And Absolutely. everybody come eat cereal and help feed everybody else. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Katie, hello. Welcome to Anna Hottis on this little mini podcast thing. Hello, Kim. I'm Good glad to you be here. To talk to me. Yay. <gasps> How many times have you been to Anna Hottis? This is my second year here. Sweet. Yes. What made you come this time? This time. I came because I had an amazing experience last year, a life-changing experience last year, for sure. And this year, I wanted to come back to the community, to the classes, to the land. Yeah. Everything here I was drawn to. And I just know I'll be here every year that it's available. Yay, me too. What has been your favorite thing so far? My favorite thing so far was when I got here and over the past two days, being able to spot people that I know that are just as excited to come up and say hi as I am and feeling the intense community that has been built. Yes. Would you say that your experience last year has affected your everyday life and or your practice? Oh, absolutely. (laughs) I took away so much from last year that has helped me to be able to open up my personal self and to deep dive into our dramas that I have and explore community and find peace in community and just love everywhere. And it's going to be there forever. And I know it. It's Mm -hmm. amazing. Is there anything that you haven't seen or that you wanted to see? Is there anything that you would like to see next year that you haven't seen here before? No, I can't really think of anything yet. I'm so impressed with everything already. It's just, it's amazing. Everything here has been wonderful. All of the staff, the facilitators, all of the attendees, everything has been amazing so far it's been a really good year it has. why should people come here i believe people should come here if they're looking for a sense of purpose community healing this can improve anybody's life 
like tremendously improve anybody's life. And I recommend coming here, even if you already feel like your life is fulfilled or you don't, there is something here for every single person. Even if it's just the food. Yeah. Because hello. Oh, Today's my amazing. favorite day. Today is pee today, and I'm so fucking here for it. Oh, well, thank you for talking to me and being on the show. Please, bye. Haley, hello. Welcome to Anahata's, even though it's the last day. <laughs> How many times have you been to Anahata's Purpose? This is actually my first time here. Yes, I was hoping for firsties. What made you come? I have a good friend named Kayla who co-signed this when people asked about festivals in a Facebook event and seeing all of the glowing comments and then looking at the schedule from last year, I was sold immediately. Perfect. Uh, what's been your favorite thing so far? Healing not good enoughness. Oh, that's the feeling hurts one. It, I, no, it thank was you. deeply transformative as a burned out gifted kid. It was a game changer. Preach. Are you a witch? I am, I think. That like means yes. So. That means yes. <laughs> so do you think you're going to take what you've experienced and learned here back home into your life and your practice? And if so, how will it change it? Absolutely. Um, I have learned a lot of tools and a really in a furthering of skills I've been trying to learn by myself, but you really need a teacher and a mentor for some of those. So everything from tarot to not magic, which was an incredible class, really those daily practice kind of things, but then also just some actual healing and transformation in addition to the metaphysical, just throughout my daily life. I think this has made me a better person. Yep. That's why I keep coming back. Is there anything you didn't see on the schedule that you'd like to see next year? I would love to learn more about healing touch and healing energy work. That would be interesting. Like Reiki and sort of sort of massage, maybe? Yes. Reiki. There was a body magic class that I wasn't able to make it to. Um, but I also have been reading a lot of Dolores Krieger and her he healing touch theories. So in addition to traditional Reiki practices, um, I'd be really interested in other healing modalities as well. Why do you think people should come here? Because community is something that you can't go without. I've never had an experience of being with so many like-minded <laughs> folks. Me cry and you don't even know me. <laughs> even just the dancing at the stage, um, it's a type of free and seen that I have never felt before. You're going to make me cry too. Because <laughs> I forgot it's the last day and I have to say goodbye to everybody. Fuck. <laughs> anyway, that's why you should come. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes, that is why you should come. Well, thank you for talking to me. I will let you get back to packing even though that's a sad thing. Thank you, bye. Thank you. Alana, welcome to Anahata's. Oh, hey, y'all. Please introduce yourself. Let everybody know who you are, what you do, and where they can find you. Um, I'm Alana. I am the owner of Green Space Readings. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> yes, you did just hear from her. In fact, her episode is coming out in Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. <gasps> I'm going to shit my pants. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> the end. Bye. Okay, see you guys later. <laughs> oh, but you can find me on Instagram at Greenspace Readings. <laughs> and the interweb uh, at uh, greenspacereadings.com. How many times have you been to Anahata's? This is my first time. What made you come here? I'm you and all of the bees. Yeah, dad. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, dad. <laughs> <laughs> what has been your favorite thing so far um okay so my favorite thing so far has been when we got rained in that first night and we all got to sit on the patio and we all just laughed and it was just so nice because it doesn't feel forced mm -hmm. like you know i don't feel like i'm forced to have conversations or like have awkward conversations it was just nice to sit there and laugh and not have to talk to anybody because everybody's just so much fun it's I just like our Marco group, except we're actually in the same porch. Yes! Love it! Uh, so, do you feel like things that you've learned here so far will affect your life and or practice when you leave? Yes. Okay, so I took the basic Akashic Records class, and I am a person who falls asleep while meditating because I'm trash, but 
don't talk bad about my daughter. <laughs> but that meditation blew my dick. It blew my it blew my mind. Like I was the best meditation I've ever had. Cool. Like it was a whole like spiritual body experience. I cried. It was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. Awesome. And then and then your podcast live that was great too. I loved it. Really? <laughs> yes. Do you, what are you going to bring from this experience home to your practice and your life? I think it's mostly going to be for my life where, okay, so I also took the lucid dreaming class and what really hit me was it's okay to be self-centered when it comes to yourself just a little bit sometimes. It's okay to only worry about yourself. Yes. Because, you know, I got three kids and I'm always, (laughs) and I'm always about my kids my dude that's my dog society expects you to do exactly everybody before you so i've been doing this that job for the past eight years and that's been fun but i've never taken the time to truly like be selfish about me that's not even selfish i know i know it's not but that's just (laughs) okay but that's what i'm gonna take back that it's okay to be about me good so what is something that you have not seen here that you would like to see next year Ooh. I don't, I don't know because I've loved everything I've seen. Um, 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 um. What is something you can bring? Oh, what I should bring next year? Table. Oh, probably more snacks. No, no. (laughs) Classes. Oh, classes or events or art or whatever. So, because I haven't seen everything, I feel like I can't really give, I can't really give that yet, because I haven't seen it all. that's fair. Why should other people come here? Uh, Because it's awesome, and it's great, and you get to cry everywhere, and nobody judges you. (laughs) And you know what else? I found that I could leave my backpack pretty much everywhere, and nobody will steal my shit. Lisa left her shoes by the river for like two days, and I'm pretty sure they're still there. (laughs) Lisa? Um, I'm sure someone has your shoes by now. (laughs) No, but seriously, and every time you walk by somebody, hi, how are you doing? How's your day been? What classes have you done? Are you excited? And I love that. Thanks for talking to me again. Okay. Love you, bye. Okay, love you, bye. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Kim. How are you? I'm really tired. Same. Same. Can you please introduce yourself and let everybody know who you are and what you do and where they can find you? Yes. My name is Crystalina May. Uh, you can find me on my podcast called The Witchy Historian on most streaming platforms. Spotify is the easiest. Uh, I also have a Facebook page, The Witchy Historian Pod Listeners, or Moonlit Shadows. You can search both of those. I am an admin on Moonlit Shadows and, well, also an admin <laughs> on the Pod Listeners page. Uh Yeah. I do stuff on both of those occasionally, but I have a team of admin on Moonlit Shadows, so we have a nice. few more things going on there. I also have an Instagram at Witchy Historian and a TikTok at The Witchy Historian. In real life, I am a graduate worker at the University of Virginia. I am a gender historian, and I focus on themes of femininity and queerness and how it intersects with faith practice. Cool. How many times have you been to Anahata's Purpose? This is my second year. What made you come this time? Um, Because I came last year and my life completely changed. And I was like, I'm never missing this again. I'm never not coming. So here I am. What was your favorite thing this time? Two things. Um, I think my absolute favorite thing was actually connecting with people who I have built relationships with over the last year and being able to share cabins with people that I know and to have conversations and chill time with those people. But I also got to facilitate this year. Yeah. Yeah. I facilitated altars and sacred spaces and it was just a really, really great experience to be able to share that with people. Cool. How would you say Anahata's has affected your life and practice outside of physically being here? The tools that I learn and the resources I gain coming here, the friends I make, 
they are now my chosen family. I, my family sucks. So <laughs> it helps to have those people that I can go to and that I can rely on. These are people that I talk to and I see, if not every day, close to it. I have gained knowledge about myself. My practice has grown. I've gained confidence in myself. I launched my podcast because I came here last Yay. year. So, I mean, this is kind of a trend now. <laughs> A lot of people have really been able to step into their power, and I'm a, I'm a big testament to that. I was kind of that really strict, like, I'm going to just be a historian. I'm going to be a professor. And now I'm like, there's so many ways that I can share my knowledge and share both my practice and my education with people. I, I don't have to separate those two parts of my life. And that's something that I had been struggling with before I came here. What is something that you haven't seen here that you want to see next year? Hmm. That's a good question because Rachel does a really good job of kind of having a little bit of everything here. Mm -hmm. I would maybe next year like to see some of the facilitators that are here every year. Um, like the group that does the primal scream and the breathwork journey, um, maybe do something, a short workshop that's a little bit more therapy based. Cause I know that they do a lot of therapy things, maybe something a little more like 102 instead of 101 for some of those classes. Yeah. Um, but like in general, even going back to those kind of back to basics classes, even for those of us who've been practicing for a long time, is still so helpful. So I can't really say that I would definitively change anything that's actually here. <laughs> I feel like we still need the 101, but I would also like to mature past it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Why should people come here? Because this is where you will find your community. If you're having a hard time finding community, or if you're having a hard time like finding your spot in your practice, or just connecting with people within your practice, especially if you're a solitary practitioner, this is the place to do it. The vibes are always real. Nobody will ever make you feel bad for crying. <laughs> or for laughing, or for screaming, um, unless it's like two o'clock in the morning, but that's a whole, <laughs> a whole other story. It's because we're sleeping. This is where <laughs> your body and your mind and your soul come to rest um, and rejuvenate. And yes, you'll have the, the post anahatas come down, but you will still leave feeling refreshed and rejuvenated and filled up. And um, even if you don't get to go to every class that you have on your list, you won't. You no, to do that. it's just not possible. Lower your expectations of yourself. Be kind to yourself. Give yourself grace. Um, I think that's the biggest takeaway every year is that Anahata gives you room to give yourself grace. And th this is a space to do that in. Well, thank you for talking to me. Thank you for having me. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. See you next year. So, Luke. Hello. Hello. I found it. <laughs> <laughs> Would you please introduce yourself? Just let it, people know who you are and where they can find you and what you do, if you want to tell them that. Sure. Um, yeah, my name is Luke Bonecutter. I am a diviner and spiritual counselor based out of San Antonio, Texas. Um, and yeah, I'm here in Anahata's a long way away from home, uh, cause my bestie is a bean and she brought me, uh, after last year having been here and realized Luke needs to be here. Um, I'm teaching a Tarot Reversals class here at Anahata's and the first class was awesome. I'm looking forward to tomorrow's. Uh, you can find me at, at Mystic Bard Lux on Instagram. I also have Linktree. I have Patreon. I would love for you to 
come be a part of my divination community or just be a resource for you if you have questions about tarot or numerology or astrology or spirituality in general. I was doing my first class, Yoga for Deeper Meditation with Sage, and I'm sitting on my mat. We had already gone through the flow and we're, we're in Shavasana and just trying to, you know, relax into being a corpse. And I'm looking up at the sky occasionally because I don't always have to have my eyes closed for that. Um, and I see all these trees facing up in the same direction. And I realized this is just a full picture of the tapestry that I have hanging above my bed. I am looking at the same thing that I'm always looking at when I wake up in the morning. So you're home still. I'm very much home. This is it's, everybody's heart home. It's so comfortable here. It's so wonderful. So safe. That was like one of the first things that yeah. came to mind. Yay. Yeah. What's been your favorite thing so far? Oh my God. I have to say the connections. I have, everyone I've been meeting <laughs> is an immediate friend. If not someone, and, and I can legitimately say I love them mm -hmm. without it being like fake. You know yeah, what I mean? After my first Anahatas, I started telling people I love them more yeah. and meaning it. It fills your heart so much. I did that. I mean, <laughs> this is the name <laughs> yeah, exactly. of the event. <laughs> right. <laughs> it does fill you up, that sense of compassion and community and caring for one another. And this land, I mean, whenever we're on the land, I know this because of festivals in general, there's always like clear messages that come through and the land reflects it back for us. And if you don't do it, it's repeated. And it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of those messages I feel like has definitely been like trust and also removing expectations and assumptions for me at least personally i think it's been amazing to to see certain people and connect with them in ways i didn't think i would have do you think this is going to affect your practice or your life once you leave also a great question because that was one of my intentions oh. uh and coming here i knew that there was um a big focus on the physicality and i've been in very much in a static state sedentary lifestyle and i wanted to incorporate more yoga for myself but i'm very bookish about yoga that's the thing like i love the philosophy i love learning the language i love learning all eight limbs and i never had a great time comparing my body to others when it came to asana so i have a hard time with like you know body dysmorphia and my body can't do that and i have different shapes and and and, 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 and right we give ourselves mm -hmm. excuses but part of what me being here was i would like love to kickstart my own personal yoga practice that feels right for me that does things like helps me meditate deeper helps me feel more balanced less anxious etc so i know that that's already going to happen <laughs> that's going to affect my craft for sure yeah i also did a not magic class with margo yeah it slapped <laughs> it was mind-blowing like all the different historical contexts and details and things that you can do with knots that we used knots for uh i was ready to buy a book after the first 10 minutes <laughs> What's something that you would like to see next year that you didn't see this year? This might be weird, but I would love to see like smaller breakout groups. Like the classes that I've attended have been pretty large, which is great. Yeah. But I think that we really thrive in intimate settings and we, we go back and forth between like click that we're running with, which is small and intimate mm -hmm. to like the workshops, which is large. And right. then like the large, large workshops, like the crowds and the rituals and the drum circles. So for me personally, I thrive in kind of smaller environments, like a, more like a chamber ensemble, if you will, like five to seven groups or like people, you know, but like imagine, imagine taking like five people and going out and kayaking on the river and like, <laughs> like, right. Like small things like that, yeah. like intimacy in intimate moments with nature, I think in smaller groups, that's, I would love to see more of that. I actually like, that's one of one more reason I like the lodges is because it's almost like six is the most. Yeah. And while I did love the cabin and we did get really close really fast, that's 11 people. <laughs> it's much. <laughs> it's much. Thankfully, in my cabin, we only have three. There's only like six of us. So it's nice. actually, it's, it's, it's a good, that's good. Yeah. And then you have enough room. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> and nobody has to get on the bunk they don't want to. And we can take the other pads and double Oh my double god. <laughs> yes, because those little tissue paper Kleenex. I'm just sleeping <laughs> on a plank of wood. 
I like, know. That's all it is. Why should people come here? Hmm. People should come here for, I think, personal exploration through connection. Through connecting with other people, relationships act as our mirrors, especially in a place like this, where we're allowed to be our authentic selves. And when we show up fully, then we invite others to show up fully. And I feel like a community like this, where we all trust each other and there is safety, uh, it's not common. It's very rare and it's very choice. And I think that this is a specifically curated event, incredibly well, may I add, for those relationships, for everyone to be a mirror for each other, to hold each other, to reflect with one another. And there's just so much learning. There's so much love. It's it's always worth it for the learning and for the love. It's my favorite thing of the year. More than my birthday. <laughs> Which is when? May. Okay. Taurus or Gemini? Taurus. Cool. Gemini rising. <laughs> Gemini moon. I see you. <laughs> my ex roomie, my my just past roomie was Gemini rising. It's like you'll have one of those faces that invites everybody to talk to. Is that what the problem is? <laughs> and they think you're friendly, is the thing. Yeah, but I mean, they, right. also Aries moon. Oh, well, then you're spicy. You're right. Yeah. I'll burn your house down. <laughs> Especially with the wrong person. I pressure. will not burn anyone's house down. Official declaration. <laughs> Probably. Probably. <laughs> well, thank you for talking to me. Thank you. This was really cool. This was great. Oh, thank you. Yay. I'm going to go follow you on Instagram now. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye. bye. Lyle, hello. Welcome to the show. Ananahadas. I know you've been here, but I'm still saying it. <laughs> So it's Saturday morning. Would you please introduce yourself? Let everybody know who you are, what you do, where they can find you. Uh, I'm Lyle. I don't really have a business or anything, but I do like crochet and stuff. Um, I'm just, I think I'm the only Lyle in the Waba Facebook group. So that's me. <laughs> How many times have you been to Anahata's? This is my second year. Yee. Last year was my first. What made you come this time? I just last year was so like peaceful and relaxing and I like actually had fun and like learned things that I'd never thought I would learn so it was like a very worthwhile experience to come back to. What's been your favorite thing so far? Oh I did the intro to energy class and the ground yo shit class and I like like I always kind of ignore the fact that I'm really bad at those things because it kind of makes me feel like I'm not a witch and because like those are the basic things you do to start everything out you know like anything you do you should ground yourself you know raise the energy and I have such a bad time doing it so like I did the classes and I was still struggling but then I like figured out like oh everyone like grounds from earth I ground from water so like I'm learning things like that so now I'm like that's cool. been the best part because <laughs> it just makes the foundations of like my witchcraft stronger now do you feel like Anahadas has affected your life and or your practice outside of being here? Yeah, like, um, I focus on, like, shadow work a lot through the last year, and it was solely because I took the Befriending the Shadow class last mm -hmm. year. I didn't love that class. I didn't love taking that class. <laughs> that I cried so hard from that class. <laughs> and I still, I, I, mean, still, those feelings. I still cry anytime I think about that class. I love when people laugh at my dumb jokes. <laughs> That and when people say I'm right on the internet are my favorite things in the world. Is there anything that you didn't see in your past experiences here that you would like to see in here? Mm. Oh, that's a hard question. <laughs> I didn't expect it. I'm actually, nobody's expecting that one. Yeah. Wow. How long do I have to think? Um, I know. Can you repeat that that's question? <laughs> it is. Oh, I've been paraphrasing. I was talking to someone about this last night. I haven't gone to many of the yoga classes, but when I see them, I don't see a lot of big body yoga instructors. And it's not that I went to a yoga class and it's not that they don't involve you. And they're always like, oh, like just do it to the best of your ability. It would be nice to see someone my size doing yoga. 
it would be AP. Yeah, it would be nice to because of my way. Mm-hmm. And just that, belly, my boobs, I like they both Del get in the dog. way. Oh, I'm smothering. <laughs> yeah, they get in the way, and it would be nice to see a bigger bodied person, like to see where they put their arms or how yeah. they position themselves. Yeah. And I'm not saying anything bad about like. Yeah, other yoga instructors they're amazing they're gentle they're loving and i like taking the one class i did take because i've been afraid of it that's the other thing you know um so i think that's the one thing cool <laughs> if that's not too intense or rude i don't think it's rude at all because we ask for what we need yeah i think you'll find some class that surprises you that was you know maybe you were just nearby when it was going on so you decided to drop in but like See you over here. Bye. Bye. Hi, Sabrina. Would you please introduce yourself if you want to? Tell people who you are, what you do, and where they can find you. Um, I am Sabrina uh, Foglio. Um, I am the known Sabrina from Tabitha's podcast, or uh, Two Geminis and a Leo podcast. I'm Tabitha's sister. What made you come to Anahata's this time if it's not your first time? Well, so. I've been coming for the last, like, three years, so this is my third year. Um, I wasn't, what? Me the, too. This is, um, and uh, I wasn't, I was thinking about coming, and I was also thinking about, like, not coming, but then my sister was like, no, like, you're coming, and then uh, she made me come. Um, <laughs> so I'm happy, I'm happy I'm here. It was definitely, I wish I was here longer. I was only, just, I'm only here today and tomorrow. Oh. So that's um, why they celebrated when they saw you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and honestly, the universe was just like you should have gone earlier because everything was just oops, like <laughs> so. Uh, you should have been here before. Like everything going on at like home was just like so stress. It was like the worst week ever, and then I got here it was like perfect. I'm like Yay. I should have been here sooner. Um, but yeah. What's been your favorite thing so far, even though you've only been here for 20 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> um, breakfast. Breakfast was really good this what was morning. It? Um, it was uh, like eggs with a bunch of stuff in it. There was like mushrooms, beans, green beans. It was it was so good though. And then there was like strawberry pancakes. Those oh. were so good. <laughs> <laughs> Did you miss breakfast? <laughs> I just eating this early makes me nauseous. Oh, uh, okay. How is Anahata's over all the times you've been at? How has that affected your practice? Uh, it's definitely encouraged me a lot more. Um, and I try to do it at home, but like life kind of gets in the way. But like when I come here, it kind of just like restarts it. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I will say, Tap also helps me kind of inc- like she encouraged me to do it more. <laughs> These damn <bugs>. that is. <laughs> yeah, that's where I live. <laughs> Forgot about what it's like. But yeah. Good. Has Anahat has affected your life in ways outside your practice? Yeah. It's definitely like shown me to do a lot more and like how to do it a different way. Um but yeah it's definitely like especially like with nature here and it's definitely like it's shown me to like more respect the the world and like the like mother earth and especially down by the dock it's just such a magnificent place and i told my sister i'm like we have to i have to go say hello because i haven't you have to greet her yes you have to yes is there anything that you we didn't have this year that you would like to see next year I don't think so. I mean, at least not on the top of my head. I might have to think more about that. that Maybe question. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Why should people come here? Uh, to definitely, uh, it's definitely a very welcoming, like, area. And no matter what kind of person you are, or what you practice or what it's just so welcoming and if you don't feel welcomed in like your community you come here and it's just like everyone's your your friend and i love it so much because like i'll be honest like i don't have many friends like out in like the world like around me Mm -hmm, that you can touch exactly and um here you can just give everybody a hug yeah and it's just so nice well thanks for talking to me you're welcome. I'm glad you thank came you. this year. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Not a problem. Okay. <laughs>
You did great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stephanie, hello. Welcome to Anahata's. Hello. <laughs> uh, how many times have you been to Anahata's? This is my first time attending. What made you come? Um, well, a couple of years ago, I know the Wapa Beans went and gave it high praise, mm -hmm. and that was just as good as a vet to me. Um, last year didn't work out, I think, because of job stuff. But this year, as the tree attacks us, what Rude. in the world? The tree just shot a bunch of pig nuts at us. How dare they? And um, my boots. <laughs> but yeah, it's my first time. What has been your favorite thing so far besides this tree? <laughs> Nature really communicating with us. Um, you know, oh God, if I had to pick one, I, that's a hard one. I would say I, I really like, broadly speaking, I really like just the feel of everybody, the, the sense of belonging and acceptance. Um, Love it. Yeah. Just, I mean, you can tell everyone's definitely coming from different parts of the of the country, of the world, but also places in their lives as well. And we all kind of just mesh seamlessly. It's mm -hmm. actually very nice. Do you think that you're going to bring, have you already found stuff yet that you will incorporate in your own practice and life after this? I have. I have. Uh, there was a kind of water magic class um, that I took some some lessons on, like whispering your troubles into a seashell and throwing it, chunking it into the water. Ooh. Very cathartic. Um, a grieving ritual that we uh, learned about and experienced was very intense, but very, very eye-opening and welcoming. So there, there's, uh, there's been a lot of really good classes so far that I'll nice. be able to carry into the normal world once more. Is there anything that you don't see on the menu, quote unquote, that you'd like to see next year? Mm. Even if it isn't like a class, something else. I would like, in terms of just general, I would like maybe a couple more vendors, a couple more like small businesses to support. Um, I know that can be a very fine line between like, here's just enough. And oh my God, it's suddenly Texas Renaissance Festival where everyone's selling something. Um, but that would be a nice little like, you know, kind of push towards small businesses. In terms of the menu or the classes, I, we did have, that. there was a basics to channeling class. I would like to dive more into like how to communicate with spirits and ancestors or whatever you want to call them. Yes. Um, especially out in the woods like this, I feel like that is the perfect place. I don't know that I want to do it in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it in broad daylight, <laughs> if that helps any. <laughs> Who should come here? Oh, God. I mean... I asked the wrong question. That's okay. Hold on. Why should people come here? Why should people... Ooh. You know what? If If you're like me and you're looking for that sense of belonging and acceptance um this is the perfect taste of that to fill your cup um especially if you live somewhere that keeps making the news and not for the good reasons oh, yeah. yeah yeah you know what i'm talking about mm -hmm. um anybody who wants to broaden their knowledge in this kind of field in the spiritual field in the magical field and just kind of community feel to it. Um, anybody who likes outdoors? Because let me tell you, I mean, this is glamping compared to what I've done. But this, this is, is not like... Pretty nice. We do not have AC up here in the north, apparently, which is mind-boggling. Where are you? I'm, I'm from Texas. I mean... Oh, up here. I'm in uh, Orchard Hills. So at, at night, cabin? it's in a cabin. So yeah, it's it's nice. It's okay. Well, thank you for talking to me and for coming. Of course. Thank you for interviewing me. Okay, bye. Bye. Jess, hello. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Can you please tell people who you are and what you do and where they can find you? I am Jessica, and with my husband, Tim, we run Warpath Archery. Uh, we are a small, indigenous-owned 
handmade archery business. We make bows, arrows, quivers. We also sell stone knives and work with other local artisans. And we also teach archery. And you can find us on the internet if you look up Warpath Archery. Awesome. And how many times have you been to Anahata's Purpose? This is year four for us. <laughs> That's so cool. What made you come this time? Um, well, other than Rachel always inviting us back, we love it. It's just a very chill event. There are some excellent workshops. The grounds are fantastic. And we get to do what we like to do best, which is share what we make, what we do, and our love for archery. And delightful knives. And like delightful knives. The one yes. I bought, and I bought my niece one this year as soon as we got here. That's literally the first thing I did. <laughs> yes, uh, we are the official vendor of knives for Anahata's <laughs> purpose. <laughs> What's been your favorite thing so far here? My favorite thing here this year was I actually got to shoot. Normally, I am down in the shop while Tim gets to have all the fun on the range. But Saturday morning? No, Friday morning? Friday morning. Sorry, the days tend to run together. <laughs> I don't know days. <laughs> uh, Friday morning, we did a new class, which was an archery 201. So instead of a basics class for people who have taken our basics classes in previous years, we made a slightly more challenging shooting range. So the targets were arranged a little differently. The angles were different. And it's closer to how we shoot as professionals when we go to tournaments. I didn't know you did that as pro like professionally. That's cool. Also, my niece said this, the archery was her favorite thing this year when yes. I Yes. Do you feel like Anahata's has affected your life outside being here? I have definitely gotten to know more people. So that has affected us uh, in the outside world, getting to know the locals and people who are part of the community that comes to enjoy Anahata's together. Uh, we have also been invited to events outside of Anahata's from people who have met us here. So that's always nice, being able to spread more, spread out more, do more, meet more people. Is there anything that you haven't seen here that you'd like to see next year? Oh, I would like to see more, I would like to see more nature work. There's a lot of grounding, there's a lot of spiritual work, there's a lot of emotional work. But with us being outside in this awesome environment with the trails and the trees and the stream nearby, doing a little more work on seeing what's directly in front of us. Because I feel like a lot of us get nature blindness where you're so used to seeing grass on the ground that you don't realize in like a little one foot square section, there can be like 10 different species. Or like yesterday, I found a salamander when I was fixing my sandal. It just crawled across my foot. I would like to be able to share that with more people. Finally, why do you think people should come to Anahata's? Oh, I think it is just a multi-sensory experience. There's the opportunity to talk. There's the opportunity to listen. There's the opportunity to be in silence. There's the opportunity to dance, to move, to be. And it's just great. And the community is great. The people are great. And the food is fantastic. Absolutely. Well, thanks for talking to me and everybody go find them on the internet immediately. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Your Average Witch. You can find us all around the internet on Instagram at Your Average Witch Podcast, Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash hive house, at youraveragewitch.com, and at your favorite podcast service. 
If you'd like to recommend someone for the podcast, like to be on it yourself, or if you'd like to advertise on the podcast, send an email to youraveragewitchpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next Tuesday.